So I want to welcome everyone to our vigil tonight and thank you for joining us for a very special event as we join together to pay our respects and honor those who have lost their lives due to COVID-19 pre-register and doing what they love. Every day, PSWs and frontline healthcare workers fight tirelessly and selflessly to provide the safest and most dignified care to our community's most vulnerable population. We want to ensure that their battle against this deadly virus is not in vain and their sacrifices will be recognized and remembered because they've given the biggest sacrifice of all, their life. As founder and CEO of the Canadian PSW Network, and a PSW myself, I am officially honored to start the night. Tonight we are joined by a wonderful panel. We've been in contact with every MPP office and we have had a wonderful response. Um, so don't be surprised if we have surprise guests joining in and out um, throughout the evening because some of them are not able to uh, join in right away. Some are going to be able to come later. Um, so they will be popping in and out uh, where they are available. And the ones that have not been able to make it have all sent their regrets. So we do appreciate that. Now, I am so pleased that we have so many different members of all different political parties here tonight and speaking and who have put their politics and their differences aside just for one evening so that we can all come together as human beings and celebrate the lives of those who've been affected and lost. It's a very hard thing that we're all dealing with and going through and we appreciate each and every one of you for being here. We're going to do our best to give everyone a moment to speak um, and there will be an opportunity at the end as well for the floor to be opened up and um, any of the media that are watching, uh, we do ask that all questions and comments go through the chat. And we also ask respectfully that they be related to the vigil only. So I'm gonna start off the evening by introducing first a very special message that was sent to everyone by Andrea Horwath, the leader of the opposition. She was unable to be here in person, but she did want to convey a very special message to everyone here tonight. I'm going to now share my screen and we will have a look at her message. Ontarians struggle through the height of this devastating current wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. I know we all have healthcare workers, PSWs, and their families in our hearts. We're filled with sorrow for everyone who's been infected at work while caring for others and fighting this deadly virus. And we join their families, loved ones, and communities in mourning all the dedicated PSWs and healthcare professionals we lost. Today and every day until this horrific pandemic is over, we rededicate ourselves to fight for the critical supports all the healthcare workers and PSWs need to be safe and healthy during the pandemic. That means ensuring each and every one of them has paid sick days and paid time off to get the vaccine so they can prioritize public health and crushing the virus without fear of losing pay. It means securing presumptive WSIV coverage for COVID-19, both for the virus itself and the trauma, PTSD, and mental health challenges that may come after it. And it means keeping up the pressure to ensure that all frontline workers have the protection and safety they deserve at work, including personal protective equipment like N95 masks, even during this challenging time, especially during this challenging time, we know that every workplace infection, injury, or death is a preventable one. Today, more than ever, we remember the dead and fight for the living. That was a fantastic speech, and we greatly appreciate those words. So um, the next person I would like to introduce is uh, Lisa Waka. She is our chair of the board here at the Canadian PSW Network. So if you would like to say a few words, I would love it. Thanks, Lynn. Everyone can hear me okay? Thumbs up? Great, thank you. 
Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here and sharing in our grief and our gratefulness to the PSWs and the other healthcare providers that we've lost during the pandemic. We're certainly joined tonight by some wonderful PSWs, dignitaries, and members of our community. And on behalf of the Canadian PSW Network, welcome. We're really glad you're here. It wasn't that long ago, uh, I was a PSW educator and I received what was called the Unsung Hero Award by the Ontario Secondary School Teachers Federation. It was a surprise to say the least. I had former students that came and some of my colleagues and it was a very humbling event. Um, but I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. It's really easy to teach skills to become a personal support worker. What I cannot teach is kindness. I cannot teach empathy. I can't teach compassion, patience, thoughtfulness, persistence, and respect. That's a genetic makeup of a PSW and they arrive to work every day. And they come to the classroom every day packed with those traits. So as the event wrapped up, I went to my car and I put my plaque and my flowers in the car. And as a former PSW, I'm all too familiar with crying in my car. But that day was different because the unsung heroes that day wasn't me. It was then as it is today. It was the personal support workers. Do you remember the blackout? of 2003, I do. I remember the PSWs that went and made egg salad sandwiches and ham sandwiches and Rice Krispie squares and brought them to personal support workers. I remember the PSW that went to Canadian Tire on her day off and bought an inflatable bathtub to take it to a palliative client so that woman could have a warm bath before she died. I remember a Christmas morning being on call and I remember um, a PSW going into the ditch, calling me and saying, it's okay, I'm gonna get towed out, getting out of the ditch. And I said, are you okay? Do you need to go home? No, I gotta carry on. There was someone out in Schaumburg in the middle of nowhere that needed help. And I remember the news broadcast of the PSW that died from COVID-19 and I remember because I knew them. So the grief of losing a colleague and a friend becomes reality an unsung hero taken too soon. Today, we honor and celebrate the PSWs and other healthcare professionals that we have lost during this pandemic, but please know that your contributions never, ever go unnoticed. We need to continue to advocate for PSWs and our mission will continue. On behalf of the board at the Canadian Personal Support Worker Network, we thank you for your commitment and dedication to the lives of people in our community. We're more determined than ever to advocate for living wages for personal support workers, more support for PSWs, more education for PSWs, paid sick days and other benefits. We need PSWs now more than ever. And you are and always will be the unsung heroes in our care system. And for the record, it's still okay to cry in your car. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing your stories and I'm thinking, oh my God, how many times have I cried in my car? Wow, yeah, I can definitely, definitely, I, I can identify with that as can the other PSWs in this room. Um, so thank you. And next we are gonna hear from Mr. Joel Harden, the MPP for Ottawa Center. Well, I'm gonna keep it brief, Lynn, and just acknowledge that we're in a war right now and you folks are the soldiers. And there's a day once a year where we remember those who fought for our country and you're doing that right now. And when I heard Gloria saying what you said, Gloria, just as we got started, when Tyler was asking you about your day and what you're going into every day, it's hard to summon words to imagine the respect that you offer. And I hope we can get our province in a place where you get vaccinated immediately and we pay folks what they deserve to pay. I hope we see a day where your profession is paid more than stockbrokers immediately. Thank you so much, Lynn. And I just also want to say her name, Christine Mandigarian from Scarborough. I was blessed to be at her celebration of life with uh, so many of you. Thanks for doing this, Lynn. You're very welcome. Thank you, Joel. And next, um, we're going to hear from Mr. Jamie West from Sudbury. Thank you, everybody. Um, 
Hello, bonjour, René. Uh, my name is Jamie West. Je m'appelle Jamie West. Je suis le député provincial de Sudbury. I want to start by thanking the Canadian PSW Network for organizing today's event and for having me as one of the speakers. I'm, I'm very honored. I want to thank and recognize my colleagues who have joined with me today. Uh, MPP Judith Monteith Farrell, MPP Teresa Armstrong. We just heard from MPP Joel Harden, MPP Terence Kernahan. I saw Chris Glover here, MPP Jill Har Andrew and MPP Kevin Yard, as well as Mike Schreiner from the Green Party, MPP Mike Schreiner and MPP Kenneth Pathy from the Conservative Party. And I apologize if I missed anybody because so many of us are here. And I wanna recognize how important this is to us as MPPs. I always like to include a land recognition when I speak and just, I, I don't know where everybody is, but I'm on the Robinson here in Treaty Territory. This is the land of the Tick Machine and Shopic people. Today is a sad day. It's an important day, but it's sad because we have to remember PSWs and healthcare workers who lost their lives. On behalf of my party and myself, I wanna pass on my sincere condolences. Earlier when people were talking about PSWs and the work they've done, you know, we were all nodding our heads back and forth and just recognition of how important this is to us. Long before the pandemic, we, we knew about the vital role that PSW workers played in our communities and healthcare workers. And we know that it's been undervalued for way too long. I often share this story of a Siberian who told me, we have to fix long-term care because those workers are family when my family's not there. And the pandemic has really shown the public how important PSWs are. Workers who are literally giving everything to provide care to our loved ones. And we know that more has to be done to keep them safe. And I say this with the greatest respect to, to my colleagues, but no more photo ops, no more platitudes about healthcare heroes. We don't get to say words like healthcare heroes unless we're gonna put our money where our mouth is. We're gonna fight for changes for PSWs and to protect them and pay them fairly. I recently tabled legislation that was voted down, but the legislation, the goal of this was to help attract and retain PSWs so they can provide the quality of work that I know the PSWs want to provide. I, I tabled the Support Workers Pay Act, and the goal of this was to create a PSW wage floor so we can ensure that home care PSWs were properly compensated for travel, so we can ensure that PSWs had a minimum wage that they all made. I know PSWs and everyone here does as well. You don't get into this field to become rich. You get, you get into this because your hearts are giant. But we have to ensure that PSWs can make ends meet. The bill would have created a wage floor and covered travel for home care PSWs. It would have had a commission that regularly reviewed PSW wages so they didn't sleep backwards and have fair wages. This first step towards creating a field that people want to get involved in. I was disappointed it was voted down, but I'll tell you, tabling the bill was an excellent chance to really talk to terrific and caring support workers. And I want to share some of those voices. Heather told me, I go into work every single day because I love my residents. As PSWs, we're basically their families now. We're everything to those people. And when their family's not there, we let them know they're not alone. We sit by them, we read them stories. We pray with them, we talk to them, and we're with them when they go through the dying process. Marissa was a lot shorter and sweet and to the point. She said, I go above and beyond for my residents, for my family when I walk through the door. And in these examples, I use only first names. And in my debate, I sometimes had to make up anonymous names because lots of the PSWs I spoke with asked me not to use their name. And what I found interesting was when they told me about being worried about being disciplined or losing their jobs. They were worried about their own careers. They were worried about the extra work their coworkers would have to do. They were worried that the quality of care for the clients they love would suffer. One PSW told me that on days when she was sick, her colleagues would have 28 clients to care for her by herself. That's the things that they worry about. Another PSW said that her spouse suggested that she slow down, that she needs to work at a sustainable pace. And she couldn't do it because she knew if she didn't rush all day, the work didn't get done. And she cared too much to let her clients go without proper care. And PSWs like, like Marissa I mentioned earlier and Heather and all of you who are watching, your family when our family's not there. And we 
desperately need to care about PSWs the way that they care about our families. Today is a sad day, but it's an important day. I live in Sudbury, and Sudbury is the home of the International Day of Mourning. We we came up with this idea in 1984, and on April 28th, it's represented around the world. My community knows the importance of mourning for the dead. But more importantly, we know that mourning for the dead is a reminder that we're going to fight like hell for the living. So today, we honor PSWs who passed away because of contact with COVID-19. We honor frontline healthcare workers. Our words won't be enough, but I want you to know, I want you to know that New Democrats know that PSWs are a family when our family's not there. And that we care about you with the same courage, the same love, the same tenacity that PSWs demonstrate when you take care of us. Thank you. I'll see you good. Thank you, Jamie. Wow. It was uh, very, very powerful and uh, very true. All of it. Very, very true. Um, next, I want to invite the MVP for Markham Thornhill, Logan Canapathy to speak. Logan and I have had many, 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 many extensive conversations about PSWs and uh, their role, their everything, their wages, their sick days. We, I mean, we've talked about it all. We've literally talked about it all. And um, I, I know that Logan truly understands where, where the PSWs are at. So I would love to have you speak, Logan, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lynn, for that uh, hand introduction. Can you hear me? Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, I thank Lynn Steele, founder and CEO of Canadian PS Technology Network and all the members of the Canadian PS Technology Network for organizing this heartfelt vigil. I'd like to thank Lisa too for your leadership and, and, and Lynn and you are a true wonderful uh, human being and you are not advocating not only for PSW's rights and you fight for, you are, you, you are, a, you are a, a conscious, there's a true face of the PSW. I, I, I know you personally, I, we met you many times and uh, we need a people like you and Lisa and to, to carry on their torch. And, uh, you know, frontline healthcare professional, tender loving, caring people, they feel others' pain and try their best to relieve others' pain. Uh, this pandemic reminds us how caring the healthcare workers are. Really, this is, a, this is a really a testament. The pandemic situation like this, test our passion, test our compassion. Our peers told you and frontline workers told us how passionate they are when it comes to helping and saving lives. Peers told you and frontline get care, I call it professional, you know, I don't call it peers told you workers, they are, they are really a professional. Have been true inspiration during the COVID-19 pandemic by giving so selflessly of themselves every day to care for our loved ones, most of our vulnerable people. Many of those on the front line have a children. They have a families of their own that they are not seeing as often as they typically would with the challenges. Um, so of combating, combating the global pandemic, also demanding more of them as healthcare professional. These heroic workers are delivering critical services that support all Ontarians, including the most vulnerable members of our communities often putting themselves or their loved ones at risk. They are saving lives and we owe them an incredible depth of gratitude. Human history never forget the bravery and selfless, selflessness of these super, I would call it superheroes. They fought against invisible enemy and lost their lives. We are here for you, Lynn. We are here for you. I'm here for, I'm, I'm here for you. Uh, we appreciate is my comment to you. I told you I will be your voice uh, when I met you the first time. Uh, I'll appreciate your selfless services and we are listening to your concern. I know there are a lot more to do to assist you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for organizing this wonderful emotional vigil to remember those unsung heroes in our lives. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Logan. And thank you for your very, very kind words. You're going to make me cry. Um, I do try very hard to be a very strong, firm, and yet professional and compassionate voice for PSWs. I really do. So thank you so much. And thank you for always being there when I've needed to speak with you. Um, and, and I actually say that to all of you because every time I've ever called any of you, you've been right there. So thank you. Um, next, I would love to hear from uh, the leader of the Green Party, uh, the MPP for Guelph, Mr. Mike Schreiner. Well, thank you, Lynn. And I've just been so inspired by your work and the work of the Canadian PSW Network. And I'm speaking to you from the Treaty 3 lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation uh, in Guelph. And I just want to, from the bottom of my heart, say thank you to PSWs for your service and your sacrifice, your hard work and your compassion, and just your deep, deep sense of caring uh, and all you've done to care for our loved ones. Um, who will ever forget those images in the first wave of the pandemic of PSWs wearing garbage bags and not having adequate PS, uh, PPE. And I will never forget, and I'm sure my colleagues uh, from all parties will never forget the calls we were receiving, people desperate for the protective equipment so they could go in and do their job. And they went in and did their job anyway from a deep sense of duty and caring. And so I just wanna offer my sincere condolences to the colleagues, the friends and the family of frontline healthcare workers and PSWs who we've lost to this tragic pandemic. And those who I, I'm afraid to say and sad to say today that we, we may still lose in, in the days to come. And um, I just want to say that, you know, we've had a lot of talk about frontline heroes and healthcare heroes and PSW heroes. And I just want to offer my steadfast commitment uh, to saying that calling somebody a hero isn't the same as treating them as a hero. And so I was proud to vote for MPP West's bill and we'll continue to advocate for paid sick days, uh, permanent pay increases, living wages, adequate staff in both home care and long-term care, pay for your travel time, um, making sure that you have the PPE support you need because that's what we owe heroes. And so thank you for caring for our loved ones. And, and thank you for um, continuing to work as hard as you do with the commitment and passion you do in some incredibly difficult situations. So thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate those words as I'm sure everybody else does. Um, next, we are going to have uh, Judith Monteith Farrell, who is the MPP for Thunder Bay. If she's still here. Thank you. There Thank you are. I'm sorry, I'm just uh, slow on the unmute button. That's okay. I'd really like to thank the uh, Canadian PSW Network for organizing this because I feel it's such an important commitment that we need to make to PSWs. Before the pandemic, we were aware of the horrific working conditions and many PSWs uh, came away from those jobs broken, broken in spirit and broken uh, with injuries but because of shortage of staff in their organizations and trying to do the lifting without the proper equipment or just not enough staff, but having to pick someone off the floor. And we heard those stories and it was already horrendous. And this vigil really, really is important because I think we all need to remember that these folks went to work and uh, they didn't come home. And uh, they, we failed them in a way that we failed in the sense that we didn't protect them sufficiently. And um, uh, I remember when we had a, a, a 
difficult second wave um, in long-term care here. And I uh, was fielding calls from families uh, who had loved ones in that facility and workers from that facility. And many workers became ill and they just wanted to go back to work to help their colleagues. And the families had nothing but good things to say about the workers. They never once blamed the PSWs and, and actually were fearful for them. So um, I'd like to give my condolences as well to uh, the families and to uh, the colleagues, but I really think it's an important event and thank you once again. Thank you so much, Judith. That was very nice. And uh, yeah, we, we, as PSWs, we were always worried that we were going to get blame for transmission, get blame for things not going right. And unfortunately, I mean, we all know that PSWs have some very, very serious constraints against them from uh, time to, you know, what, what the, the management even puts on us. And sometimes it is what the families will put on us. And you know, we, we do do our best and then we're short staffed all the time. I, I don't think I've ever met a PSW yet that have said they've had a full shift, fully staffed at all, ever, anywhere. So definitely, you know, that's one of the big things that we also speak about as well is staffing ratios are a huge must as well. Um, and it's only going to be provide better care for the people we're taking care of too. So it's definitely a good point. Um, and then um, our last MPP speaker for tonight so far um, is going to be Terence Kernahan. He's the MPP for London North Centre. Thank you very much, Lynn. And I'd like to thank the Canadian PSW Network for putting on this really important, meaningful event this evening. PSWs do some of the hardest most caring and most loving work. You are the glue that has held up a fractured, underfunded and neglected system for years and years and years. It's distressing when we hear people say that they didn't know what was happening in long-term care when governments have known for many years. Yet we haven't seen the political will to change all of that. You're not paid nearly enough for what you are worth and for the difference that you make. You know, PSWs and families have held up this system and it shouldn't be that way. It should be the extra on top. You know, <clears throat> in order to provide solutions, I believe that the government needs to provide you with a seat at the decision making table so they can ensure that any changes that are made are made with your needs as well in mind. You know, your working conditions are many folks living conditions and we cannot ever separate those two things. You do this powerful work and you do this beautiful work because it's inside of you, because you care and because you want to make a difference in people's lives. And I want to thank you for that, because please know that each day and every day that you do. But you also deserve a raise. Permanently. Not COVID dollars. I'd like to thank you again for inviting me this evening. And I'd like to also say to all of the PSWs who are gone too soon. That we will remember them this day and each day and thank them for the difference they made in many people's lives. Thank you so much, Terrence. That's very wonderful, wonderful words. And I'm sorry, we actually do have one more speaker. My apologies. Teresa Armstrong. I, and ironically, you're sitting right next to me on the corner here. So um, you're my neighbor. So yes, absolutely. Um, I know you, you wanted to say a few words and uh, we would absolutely love to hear from you. Oh. Thank you um, very much. First, I just wanna say, uh, of course, 
Thank you to the Canadian PSW Network for arranging this vigil. It's so important to hold space for the families and friends and colleagues who have lost loved ones during this very tragic time. We have lost 20 healthcare workers to COVID-19 in Ontario. That's 20 too many. That's 20 lives, 20 families, 20 communities that have been devastated. And I am truly honored to be here today to honor them and, this, and their service. Going to work should never have be put people in harm's way. And these folks kept our loved ones safe and healthy in the midst of a tragedy. And for that, we are so, all so very grateful. We will miss them, their dedication and their impact. We will honor them by working to ensure that no other healthcare worker's life is at risk when they go to work. We will stand in solidarity to fix the system that took them from us. I also want to mention um, COVID amongst the COVID chaos that's been happening with emergency orders and legislation. We can't forget what it's about. It's about people, people that have lived through it and people that have died um, because of COVID. So this vigil is just a reminder that we should never forget what happened during COVID. And that's why I did introduce a bill in the legislature, Bill uh, 241. And I'm and it's it's basically asking the com the uh, conservative, the liberal government, or sorry, the conservative government to proclaim COVID-19 Memorial Day. And I'll just read the explanation because it encompasses what we've been all talking about. So the preamble to the bill is, since the Ontario government declared a state of emergency on March 17th, 2020, in response to the growing threat of COVID-19, the lives of Ontarians have been fundamentally changed. After watching the pandemic unfold around them, Ontarians stepped up to do their civic duty by staying indoors, wearing masks and getting tested, all in service to the public's health. Over 100,000 Ontarians have been infected during this pandemic and thousands have died. COVID-19 Memorial Day observed on the third Monday in March in each year will be a time to acknowledge and recognize the toll COVID-19 has, has had on people of Ontario and will especially be a time to honor the lives that have been lost. So I wanna, um, so I just want to thank everyone um, for this uh, very special day. And it's, it also goes on to say that this day will be a time for standing with grieving families whose, lo whose loved ones have succumbed to the virus, often having to suffer alone. It will be a time to pay homage to the incredible sacrifices that Ontarians have made to keep each other safe. It will be a time when we honor frontline healthcare and essential workers who laid their health and wellness on the line in the service to Ontarians. It will be a time when we thank volunteers and family caregivers who stepped up to support their communities and loved ones. We will honor their courage in the face of risk, their resilience to carry on, and their trauma of working through a deadly virus. COVID-19 Memorial Day will also be a time to reflect on how to protect Ontario's most vulnerable populations, particularly seniors and racialized communities who make up an, out, an outsized percentage of COVID-19 infections and death. Everyone who has died as a result of this pandemic will be remembered, including the disproportionate number who lived and worked in long-term care. We will honor them every year on the third Monday in March in each year. And I think it, that the bill that I presented is, is fitting because we can't forget, and these vigils have to keep happening. This has been a horrible tragedy that COVID um, has caused for all of us, and in particular PSWs, as we're remembering the lives lost in, in, in long-term care and home care. And we just, we can't forget, we need to continually uh, remember and keep educating ourselves that this cannot happen again. So thank you again for everyone here and uh, for having this vigil, it's so important. Thank you so much, Teresa. That was wonderful, and uh, you're right. We, we can't forget, and and that's part of why we're doing what we're doing because we do not want people to forget. Um, and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that they don't. Um, so now, next, I have a wonderfully fantastic person I would love to introduce to everybody, <clears throat> Sandra Kaleta. 
She is a wonderful woman who I had the pleasure and honor of meeting online before this pandemic started. Um, she's strong and fierce and a very passionate advocate for seniors and seniors' rights. Um, she's had so much firsthand experience working directly with PSWs um, and frontline healthcare workers. So I am very pleased to have her here her with us tonight. Hi, Lynn. Thanks so much for having me. It's my honor to be here. Um, I'm representing the 4,400 members of the Advocates for Long-Term Care. And on behalf of all of us, I'd really like to express my sincere condolences to all the families, friends, and coworkers who've lost someone during this pandemic. Um, your pain is felt by all of us. Um, these losses were tragic and in so many cases preventable. And I truly hope that we can learn from this going forward. I do have somewhat of a unique perspective on healthcare workers because I've spent four years watching their struggle online in long-term, sorry, in person in long-term care with my mom. Um, I wanna share my experience just to validate what they're saying. So often people say that healthcare workers are exaggerating or it's not that bad. I'm here to tell you when they say we're in a crisis, they mean it. It's bad, it was bad before the pandemic and it's even worse now. Um, for four years, I witnessed firsthand their struggles, hardships, worries, and fears. Over this time, I've formed friendships with a lot of the PSWs, and I've heard, them, I've heard them say many of these fears out loud. They'll tell me about their sleepless nights, worrying about residents, lying in bed, staring at the ceiling, thinking about all the things that they couldn't get to that day. Um, they talked about working shorthanded for weeks and months on end. Um, the effect that this had on them physically and mentally. Um, getting called in on days off because there's just never enough staff and missing time with their own families as a result. This is the reality of working in long-term care and in other healthcare settings. I want everyone to know that this is happening every single day and this was before the pandemic. It's become exponentially worse since then. Um, we have asked a lot from our healthcare workers during this pandemic. We've asked them to essentially pick up the slack of decades of short staffing and underfunding by our governments. And these healthcare workers have worked tirelessly for the past 14 months. They've had barely any days off, no vacation days allowed, very little time with their own families. And we've often asked them to do this in precarious conditions without proper safety equipment, without the resources they need, and often when they themselves are on the brink of collapse. As a result, too many healthcare workers have got sick themselves. And in the very worst cases, too many have died. So now I'm here to ask all my fellow Ontarians who are not healthcare workers to step up the exact same way that these healthcare workers did. It's time for all of us to let our governments know that these deaths will not be in vain and we won't allow our healthcare workers to work in these conditions any longer. We've called them heroes and it's true, they really are. But now we have a responsibility to put actions behind these words to ensure that this never happens again. So I'm asking everyone to please take whatever steps you can, no matter how big or how small, to voice your concerns. When the world finally starts opening up again, attend a protest, write letters to your MPP, tell your stories to the media, get on social media, join family councils, speak up when you see something. No action is too big or too small. And we have to let those in charge know that enough is enough. Um, and most of all, I'm asking everyone to vote responsibly. Um, we can no longer vote based on things that will only affect us like minuscule tax cuts or gimmicks like buck up year or looking only to benefit ourselves. 
we need to vote with a greater good in mind. We need to take care of each other so that next time there's a pandemic, we aren't having any more memorials for healthcare workers that we lost prematurely. Let's learn from our mistakes and do better. Just this past week, we've seen the power of our collective voices and how we've been able to make change in government policies we didn't like. So I say, let's keep it going. It's been a really hard year for all of us, many of us facing the loss of our own loved ones or of jobs or of businesses. But we have a duty at this point to all those that have been lost. Yesterday, the U of T historians put out a statement that said, economies recover, the dead do not. That's a fact and let's all please remember it. Thank you. Wow, Sandra. Round of applause, absolutely. Well said. Uh, one of the main and many reasons that I adore you. Um, and now I'm going to go to someone else who I also adore, who I have the utmost of respect for, Natalie Mara. She is another woman I am proud to have made the acquaintance of over the last oh, probably year or so at least. Um, she's the director of the Ontario Health Coalition. Uh, she has served there for the last 10 years. And prior to that, she had worked um, with the Epilepsy Association in Kingston and Brockville, I believe it was. Um, mm -hmm. And you're now on uh, boards with the Canadian Health Coalition as well and improving um, public universal health care. Am I missing anything? That's great. <laughs> Thank you. So thank you very much. Um, and Lynn, you know, you said that you uh, you try to be a, a strong, professional, effect, effective voice for PSWs. I just want to tell you that you succeed in being a strong, professional, and effective voice uh, for PSWs. And that affection um, that you express to us goes both ways. We feel it for you. And we thank you so much, uh, all of you, um, for the work that you do on behalf of PSWs. Uh, the events over the last month and now more than a year uh, of the pandemic have really forced me to think a great deal about how we value human life in our society. The crisis that, co uh, that COVID-19 has presented to us has cast really an unflinching light on all of us. And in so doing, it has revealed both the limitless heights of human compassion and at the same time, the most egregious of negligence and gross disregard for human life. On the side of the angels are you, the PSWs. Heroic efforts have been made, <clears throat> sorry, um, by thousands of you. Um, true selflessness and self-sacrifice have been demonstrated by so many of you for PSWs whose role is so critical and who have toiled for so many years um, without being seen, without being heard in conditions that can only be described as oppressive and exploitative. Um, the pandemic has finally cast a spotlight on the critical role that you play in the healthcare system. Um, it has only just begun to uh, show uh, what you do and give the due recognition for what you do. Without exaggeration, you more than anyone have held things together this year. Without exaggeration, you hold a very special place in our hearts, in our souls, and in our thoughts. Sorry, I'm a little emotional uh, because it has uh, just been such a terrible time, especially over the last year. <clears throat> Sorry, I have to say that, you know, you could run a long-term care home or a home care agency, and you could have the director of care or the vice directors of care away for a week or a month at a time. And most residents wouldn't even notice. You could not run a long-term care home for 24 hours or 48 hours or a week without all of the residents perishing. Um, in terms of your role in the healthcare system, we could do without more of them. We cannot do without more of you. Um, and I think finally people are recognizing that, but policy has not recognized that. 
You, our PSWs, have shown extraordinary resilience, even after decades of planned underfunding, planned inadequate supports, planned undercapacity. That resilience is not created by some kind of inanimate object, you know, in the sky. It's not created by healthcare policy. In fact, quite the opposite. It has been created by you, the people who have stretched yourselves, who have pivoted repeatedly to deal with crises, who have worked harder than you have ever worked, and it was always extremely hard, um, who have braved illness, disability, emotional trauma, and death to provide care for others. With all the modern technology we have, the bare truth remains that healthcare is fundamentally about human beings providing and receiving care from each other. It is the resilience of those providing care that has seen us through this crisis. Across the province through the crisis, I've been moved by the countless acts that we've witnessed of care, of social solidarity, of what can only be described as love by PSWs for all of our family members. I've also been horrified by the other side, the greed, the profit-taking, the incompetence and the recklessness of some in power to whom we have entrusted our loved ones' lives and who have an obligation to provide you with the protections that you need to do your work to care for others and have not done so. I wrote these speaking notes last night in the midst of compiling information about the third wave and data and stories to send out to everybody. And I have to say that this is the most grave situation that we've witnessed now. Hospital ICUs are full, beyond full. There are 813 people in intensive care today, the vast majority of them on ventilators, and more than 2,300 people in hospital with COVID-19. The coroner reported yesterday that every day for the last two weeks, approximately two people per day have died in their homes, never having made it to hospital before their blood oxygen levels have plummeted and they've perished. Across the entire healthcare system, a massive unprecedented redeployment of all staff is underway, moving home and community care nurses and PSWs and other health professionals into hospitals to help the hospital staff now reeling under the load of uh, desperately ill patients. Non-emergent and non-urgent surgeries are now canceled. COVID patients are being taken care of in every pocket of hospitals. The scope of practice for nurses and health professionals have been overridden so that they can be redeployed to units to care for patients outside of their scope and experience. More than a, a thousand to uh, somewhere around 1500 hospital patients are being offloaded from hospitals to long-term care homes, still severely understaffed from the first and second waves to make room for more patients. We've tried, oh, sorry. Every hospital worker will tell you that the majority of those patients are essential workers, sick because they're required to go to work away from home. Some of them got brought COVID home and infected entire families who are now fighting for their lives. In the last seven days, Ontario alone has lost 199 people to COVID-19. Since the beginning of April, that number is 497. More than one person per hour is dying now. On some days, it's almost two people per hour. We've tried to keep a record for history of all of those healthcare workers who have lost their lives to COVID-19 in hospitals, long-term care, home and community care. I looked through the descriptions of their lives, the testimonies by their loved ones, their photos last night as I was writing this. They are mostly PSWs, mostly women. Many had worked 20 or 30 years um, in long-term care and some in community care. They gave their entire adult lives to working to take care of the elderly and the ill. Some are nurses in long-term care and hospitals. Some are environmental service workers and cleaners. Many, if not most of their deaths were preventable. At this point, more than 420,000 Ontarians have been infected with COVID-19. Among those, at least 21,400 are healthcare workers. Those numbers do not capture all. In July, we phoned Public Health uh, Ontario and made a formal data request to get the breakdown of and the classification of workers who had died as a result of COVID-19 and had been infected by COVID-19. What we found out was shocking. 
in the entire first wave up to the end of June, they had not tracked PSWs who'd been infected with COVID-19. In the worst mass casualty event in our long-term care history by the only data available, we can say definitively that at least 6,900 long-term care staff have been infected, 6,900. And more than 3,750 human beings, that's residents and staff, have died so far, most of those deaths preventable. Suffering and loss on this kind of scale impose a moral obligation on our society. They require a real commitment to ensure that what happened can never happen again. They necessitate a soul deep acknowledgement that their lives mattered, that they had value, that we will never forget them. Thank you for inviting me to share the day of mourning with you. Let this be our own recommitment to the principle never again. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Natalie. Whew. Wow, those numbers are staggering, staggering. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Uh, wow, you know, it's... um. The, the only thing that came into my mind right then was, you know what, we're untracked. It seems that we're a lot of things that are beginning with un, unregulated, unrecognized, un, well, under respected, underpaid. We need to start removing that un out of it and start recognizing the huge sacrifices that these PSWs and frontline healthcare workers are, are giving every day. They're putting their own selves at risk, their own lives at risk, their families, their own loved ones. And we have to stop ignoring that. So moving on. Whew, I gotta catch my breath after you, Natalie, my God. Whew. Okay. I want to introduce somebody who is also very spectacular, Mr. Tyler Downey. Uh, Mr. Tyler Downey, uh, he comes from a home of family health care workers, and uh, he's been with SEIU Healthcare for, I believe, 15 years now. Um, he's currently the secretary treasurer, and he's the officer responsible for the home and community care sector. Uh, within the union and he actually has an extremely special guest with him tonight that I am going to have him introduce and we are beyond thrilled to have both of you here and you can have the floor Tyler. Yeah thanks um, Lynn and thanks for inviting uh, myself and Gloria Turney who's with me. Uh, I'll introduce her shortly but definitely thanks for allowing us some space and time to uh, be in the moment with everyone, um, to reflect, uh, to uh, think about where we're at in our society, uh, but also think about how do we build ahead and how do we build forward? Uh, and so I, I appreciate you putting this on uh, and arranging it. Um, it's organization like organizations like the P Canadian PSW Network that is needed uh, to be the voice for PSWs. And I'm just gonna say that again. Um, the Canadian PSW network is needed to be the voice of the PSWs out there because here's what's happening. There are groups out there and I'm just gonna call it what it is. Um, I'm a straight shooter. Um, there are groups out there that are claiming to be the voice of PSWs who are in the pockets of the employers that are trying to keep the standards for PSWs down. It's plain and simple. And so for groups like yours who are out here um, doing the work, advocating, being sincere, being genuine in your approach, uh, it's a breath of fresh air and we're glad to be a part of it. And we're glad to be um, on here tonight and working with you. So thank you again for you and your team to, for putting this on. I wanna just uh, take a moment before I introduce Gloria to just recognize uh, and um, Christine Mandagarian, which I know was mentioned earlier, um, Sharon Roberts, Arlene Reed, uh, and Maureen Ambersley. Those are the members 
of SEIU Healthcare that have passed away in the last year. Uh, and I just wanna take that moment to just put their names in the air so that we remember them. We remember the sacrifice that they made. We remember the contributions that they made to our healthcare system. And we remember the contributions that they made to the residents and the patients and the clients that they served for so many years. They filled them with joy. They were there for their families. They were um, the ones who spoke with them daily, uh, the ones who confided in them and they were confided in. And so I just wanna take a moment to recognize the extreme loss that we have um, uh, incurred because of uh, their deaths. And so, um, you know, it, it, it was a sad day just about a year ago when I got the news that Christine Mandigarian had passed away and I had a chance to speak with um, her daughter and uh, arranged a memorial that I believe um, Joel uh, Arden had uh, talked about earlier, um, you know, and her daughter, um, when I first spoke with her, said that it was preventable. All Christine was asking for was for time off, paid time off, so that she could isolate appropriately. But she was forced to work because of the greedy employer that she works for to go to work and strap up and suck it up, right? And so that's what these PSWs are facing every day. And it's an extreme shame that that happens right here in Ontario. Um, and so I see a lot of politicians on here tonight. And I just wanna say it the way I wanna say it. It's your job and your responsibility to call those type of things out call that negligent behavior out when you have a chance and you have the floor, you have the power to do that on a daily basis. So I just wanna push that in the room here um, so that it's crystal clear that we cannot allow uh, these employers to be so negligent and get away with it. We gotta keep calling them out. And so if you see the backdrop, we're talking about respect, we're talking about protection, we're talking about paying these frontline healthcare workers what they always deserve they're due. And so, I mean, I'll stop because I can go on for forever because I'm just so agitated about what's happening. Um, but I, I definitely wanted to just lift you up, um, Lynn, uh, and the Canadian PSW Network, lift up all of the other speakers, all of the MPPs that came on tonight, spent their time to just recognize and appreciate the moment that we're in, um, but continue to fight, continue to voice um, your concerns for uh, healthcare workers right across uh, this province. Uh, I also want to just lift up uh, Sandra for being on here because I'm also thinking about all of those residents um, that have passed away, the thousands of seniors that we have lost due to this pandemic that were so deeply connected to PSWs, that were so deeply connected to the nurses and the dietary staff that we've lost. Um, and so all of those families that I know are deeply impacted. Thank you for uh, Sandra for coming on. Uh, and representing that voice there. So with no further ado, you know, cause I don't wanna ramble on cause I can tend to do that. I wanna just invite, you know, Gloria Turney who uh, is an amazing uh, woman uh, on our executive board, represent the woman's seat on our executive board at SEIU Healthcare. Um, she's a home care PSW, a fabulous woman, strong. You know, I mean, you're gonna take it away. You just do what you do, Gloria. Um, and she's going to share a little bit about Arlene Reed and um, her, her, her relationship, but also talk about what it's like to be a PSW in this moment. So take it away, Gloria. Thanks, Tyler. Now I have to push my head in. <laughs> you know, I want to say good evening to everybody. And um, I'm so honored to have this opportunity to talk about my friend Arlene. And I'll start there. Arlene and I, we both were born in Jamaica, on the western side of Jamaica. We grew up in St. Thomas. We went to the same primary school and from the same part, played together as kids. Arlene migrated from Jamaica about 30 years ago. She came to Canada. And Arlene has always worked as a personal support worker. To know Arlene was to know one of the most humblest souls. And I'll tell you that Arlene was the complete opposite of me. Arlene would be in the room and you'd never know she's there. She was quiet. She was humble. She loved to cook, loved her four kids, you know, became a grandmother. Arlene, one of the last trips she made to Jamaica was to be with her family. There was kind of a writ going on and she decided, 
I am going down to Jamaica and I'm getting my family back together, all together peacefully. That was the last trip she made to Jamaica. She came back, isolated, went to work, worked for three days, left work with a fever of 39. Seven days later, Arlene was dead. Could Arlene's life have been saved? Definitely, yes. Because Arlene needed the proper screening, PPE, the stuff that we were not given as personal support workers to save our lives. I have listened to so many, the MPPs and Sandra and Lynn, you know, Lisa, everybody talk about PSWs. I wanna tell you what it's like to be a PSW. We get up every morning without fail, no matter the snowstorm, no matter the rain, no matter what it is, we get up because we know that we might be the only person that that client is going to see for the whole day. Sometimes for the whole month, we're the only person going into that place to take care of them. To see those smiles, sometimes you walk in, they're so apprehended, they're not sure who you are, but as you go on, you take care of them, they become accustomed to you, used to you, you become family. You are that, you are not your PSW, you're my girl. You become, my girl is coming. My girl is here. They take that phone call is, I have to get off the phone call, my girl is here. That's endearing to us. But the flip side of this is over the years, we have walked into dog bites. We have walked into bed bugs. We have walked into family members attacking us. We have walked into, as you can see, racial discrimination. We have walked into so much and we have voiced it for as long as it has been happening, we have been making it known. COVID is only the band-aid that has been ripped off. I should tell you, two months before COVID became a big thing, and I can see some of my coworkers here and they can vote for me, we had to go to the Ministry of Labor to fight to become essential workers so that we could get a raise of pay. And you know what we were told? We were not essential, we were only and elders and tea makers. That was what we were called. Two months, eight weeks to that date, COVID, and all of a sudden we became heroes. We became essential workers and everybody is, oh, they're the best and the heroes and the heroes. We're not heroes, we're only tea makers. That's what you said we were. Because at the end of the year, after working all through COVID, all you gave us was a box of chocolate and a card. That's what we deserved. We still don't get paid sick days. We, we have no pension. We have no pension. I work in home care. If I, when I retire, if I can afford to retire, I will have no pension. So tonight I am asking all the MPPs. Yes, we mourn for the people we have lost, right? We mourn for them because we love them. Arlene was a friend. She was somebody I grew up with. Christine Mandagir and I've met through union, right? So Maureen Ambersley, I have met because of the union, but I am mourning for people like Jody Uzan and Darla and Carmen. I mourn for them today. Why? Because of the uncertainty of what is going to happen to us. If we have to fight for three years, the first thing our premier did was to take away the two paid sick days that we had. If I get sick, do I make a decision if I stay in my apartment because I can't pay my rent or do I go to work? I am going to work. I'm going to suck it up and I'm going to work. What is going to happen? COVID is going to continue. So I'm asking every single one of you, yes, we mourn tonight because of who those have passed, but please mourn for us. Help make a change. Make that change that we can say proudly, our politicians that we elected made a change for us. You all realize Christine Mandagaran, Arlene Reed, Sharon Roberts, and I could go on. They're all women. Personal support workers are mainly women, women of color. What does that say to you? It's about time you stop holding us down, pay us a fair wage, Give us benefits. Let PSW become a career, not just a job. I just want to thank everybody who's here tonight. 
it is very humbling to see so many of you turn up. And I can say, you know what? You have all been our champions. But I ask that if and when we do what we are about to do and you become, <laughs> I won't say more, please don't forget us. Don't just call us heroes in name only. We are human beings and we need people to stand up for us. Thank you. Wow, Gloria, wow. I'm getting all choked up listening to you and I'm, I, whew, <laughs> I'm terribly sorry for the loss of your friend. I, I can't say any more than that because I don't know what else to say. I hear your struggles. I know your struggles. I've been in your struggles. We, we everyone who's a PSW in this room absolutely knows. They 100% know. And thank you for everything you do every day and everything you're going to continue to do. So that was very heavy. Now I am going to introduce somebody. I, I have a really, um, I have a neat little blurb about this person but I do want to share something about him I see you getting all nervous there Wally don't worry <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna embarrass you but I am going to tell you how much I adore you and how much I'm gonna tell everybody how much I adore you I Wally Shaw he has been named one of RBC's top 25 Canadian immigrants he is a poet and a motivational speaker who has delivered TED Talks and spoken at hundreds of schools and colleges across North America. Wally's journey as an artist began in his hometown as he was named the city of Mississauga's official poet. Since then, Wally has toured coast to coast across Canada, worked with Fortune 500 companies and made his mama proud by graduating from the U of T. From being featured on TV with Selena Gomez to inspiring thousands to follow him on his Instagram, his social media, all of it, he uses his platform for positive change. He has even performed for Barack Obama. He has performed for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Seth Rogen, and even freestyled with Kendrick Lamar. Uh, he has most recently, I believe back in February, you were, correct me if I'm wrong, you were asked to do the performance for Hazel McCallion's 100th birthday. So that's pretty spectacular. Before I give Wally the floor, I'm going to tell you that I met Wally years ago uh, when my daughter was going to um they had a name for it but my kid called it the cop camp so it's essentially where they go and they learn different life skills and they learn how to say how to be safety they go to the safety village and things like that and wally did this incredible beyond incredible poetry that I, I literally felt like somebody just went bang into my chest and I went, whoa. And my youngest having severe anxiety um, actually took quite a shining to him. And uh, that's how we met. That's how we started talking. It's how we connected and that's how we became friends. So I am beyond honored to ask Wally for his words and he has a special performance for us tonight. So the floor is yours, Wally. Thank you so, so much, Lynn, for that wonderful introduction and for years of friendship. And I'm so happy that we stayed connected throughout all that time. And, uh, and I wanna share a couple of words of poetry with you, but I need to pause for one second and shout out to Gloria because when she was speaking, I was feeling that. And same thing with you, Tyler, you guys spoke with such passion and such truth and it inspired me so much. And I had a grandmother um, pass away five years ago and I would see PSWs come and work with her all the time, all the time. And they were literally like family to grandma and to our family. 
you know, and I recognize just how much the work that goes into what you guys do. And I want to say thank you for people, for the people on behalf of the people that maybe have never said thank you to you. Thank you for all the work that you do. And thank you for speaking so unapologetically about the issues that matter. Thank you for checking the politicians in the room and making sure that your voices are heard. That's not easy to do, but I appreciate you doing that very much. And I love that you spoke so unapologetically. Gloria, I'm giving you a little high five right now. <laughs> I wanna share a spoken word poem with you guys really quickly. I have to break my fast in like a few minutes. So um, I'm fasting today because I'm Muslim and it's Ramadan, but um, I wanna share this poem with you. This poem is one that I think speaks to the idea of generosity and really the I think, in my opinion, it's it's people like PSWs, it's those frontline workers, it's the teachers. These are the people that embody generosity with the work they do every single day. And so I want to share this quick poem. It's called The Toonie. Here is how it goes. Jimmy is hungry. He's just a kid with nothing to eat. He walks through Mississauga and finds a toonie on the street. He steps into a Timmy's to get a donut and a tea, but the lady at cash gives him a smile and his order for free. He goes out into the cold to a homeless man holding an empty cup. He drops the toonie inside and tells him to stay up. Mark is his name. He's been homeless since he was 20. Two dollars isn't a lot, but a snack would be plenty. On his way to the store, he passes a food bank that he never saw before. He goes inside and is greeted with a smile. They offer him a meal and he stays for a while. And as he gets up to leave, he hears a woman cry and complain. He recognizes her and says, what's wrong today, Jane? I'm stressing I lost my change for the bus. So he passes her the toonie and says, it happens to all of us. Jane sits at a bus stop going to get treatment for her cancer. A passerby asks her how she is and before she could answer, he smiles and hands her a bus transfer. As she gets onto the bus, the toonie falls out from her purse. The toonie on the street made a blessing from a curse. John walks with his son, Will, to go watch the Raptors play. And they both come across the toonie as they walk on Christmas day. Will picks it up and says, Dad, I'd like to give this to you. I'm just so thankful for all the things that you do. You see, all it takes is a little to change the world a lot. Money comes and goes, but kindness isn't forgot. All we have is each other. Through these highs and these lows, it's our kindness and compassion that always ripples and grows. Live to share that kindness so that others can live. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Thank you. I want to just. Oh, I'm all <laughs> Thank teary. You. Thank you. I want to I want to end by saying that this poem speaks to the work that you guys do day in and day out. You're not doing this for money. You're doing this because you care and that there's people out there that need you and you recognize that. Heroes aren't the people that we watch on Netflix or on TV or read about in newspapers. They are all of you. You are the unsung heroes that are doing this work. And I pray that the situation gets better for us and that we get a new government as soon as we can. <laughs> but I really hope that one day and one day soon, we can start to pay PSWs what they deserve and that you guys have truly the platform and the voice that you have deserved for a very long time. Thank you so much for all the work that you do. And thank you so much for having me at your event. And Lynn, lots of love. I appreciate you having me. This has been fantastic. Keep oh, it up. Thank you so much, Wally. Wow. You didn't disappoint. You got me all teary again as usual. Oh, boy. Ah, powerful words, Wally. Wonderful. Thank you so, so much. Um, and... I do want to mention, I know uh, Wally didn't mention it uh, right away, but um, thankfully his mother actually had COVID and recovered. So he fully 100% understands just how 
how rough this can really be. Uh, so again, thank you, Wally, for taking that extra time. And, and I know you are going to have to do your, your break of fast at some point. So if you do have to go, I, we all completely understand. So much appreciated. And um, I want to thank absolutely everybody because you've all been amazing. And I've just been on this incredible roller coaster of emotions tonight, just listening to everybody. And um, we are going to open up the floor um, in a few minutes. Um, but what I would like to say, um, we, we do have a, a special announcement coming up um, to end the night on a little bit of a, a lighter note um, and a positive note regarding uh, the upcoming PSW Day on May 19th. Um, and I do feel that it's a, a fitting forum to let everybody know what we have in the go and in the works because, you know, this is about recognizing PSWs, recognizing their sacrifices and recognizing everything that they do every day and will continue to do. So last year, a lot of you know that um, we got Latin Niagara Falls lit up last year for PSW Day. And... Um, we thought that was pretty spectacular for our first official PSW event for PSW Day. And somebody said to me, well, seeing as you went big on your very first official PSW Day event, you can't top that next year. What are you going to do? And I think I responded with, watch me. I'm a PSW. You don't know what I can do. So... With that, this PSW Day is, again, going to be in honor of all the PSWs, and we do want to make sure that it is noted that we will be commemorating it to the memory of all the PSWs that we have lost. Um, but we have um, been able to, once again, set up lighting of all of the monuments across Ontario, including Niagara Falls. We are also going to be lighting up the CN Tower, the Toronto sign, the Mississauga Clock Tower, uh, all the way out to the Jumbo in St. Thomas. Um, so we will be asking all the PSWs in those areas. We are, we are going on the premise that unfortunately we're probably still going to be in uh, some sort of a lockdown measure to some degree. So we're gonna be asking the PSWs that live in those areas to go out, take a picture, take a selfie with it if they can and post it on our social medias with uh, a special hash hashtag that we're going to be creating for it. Um, and we decided to also take it one step further. And we now also have an extensive list of all of the um, major cities and towns across all of Ontario where mayors have all joined in to give us an official proclamation for PSW Day in their cities and towns across Ontario. So we wanted to make sure that PSWs were recognized on the biggest scale we could possibly muster up for this year. So I think we've kind of done that. So it's again for you guys, the PSWs, you deserve it. You know, I mean, there's only so much that we can do but you know every little bit counts and every piece of recognition counts and we're going to do it all for you as much as we can however we can and um we're going to dedicate it again to every psw out there the ones we've lost the ones we still have and the ones that we're hoping to continue to get and bring into this amazing wonderful career wonderful job wonderful feeling every day um so to end the night before we open the floor to comments and questions, I wanted to thank everyone so much for coming out, participating in our vigil, participating in speaking. And I know we do have some more people that do want to speak at, at the end as well. So we're going to open up for that. Um, I want to thank all of our, our MPPs who have come in and joined us and some of them are talking, some of them are watching, some of them are, um, you know, just waiting their turn to speak. And when we open up the floor, which is fantastic. And uh, we just wanted to say thank you to all of you, all parties coming together for one night as human beings to celebrate 
human beings. So we truly, truly appreciate that from you. Um, PSWs, we love you. We appreciate you. Everything you do every day does not go unnoticed. You, you know that we definitely do appreciate everything. So we want to basically end the night here just to say thank you so much for everything you've done and everything you're going to continue to do. So we're going to open up the floor to whoever wants to chat, whoever wants to talk, whoever wants to have any questions. Um, and that's pretty much about it. I appreciate everyone who took the time to come out tonight. It's so greatly appreciated.